This is a first look inside the Technics record player. You can see all the connection wires have been cut off. This is the power supply. It's shielded also. Chassis, speed control circuit, motor. It says 1977, so this record player is from 1977. Then we have the um, speed control adjustments, uh, speed selector. Down there is the light for the stroboscope. And this is our first real problem. Now, first problem is to put in a new power core, but that's really not a real problem. So the first real problem is the connection board for the audio. This is a closer look onto the connection board for the audio. And this is where the cartridge is hooked up to it. And there is the output, the audio cable. And, well, it's supposed to be like this. Left negative, left positive, right positive, left negative, ground. You know, the, the chassis of the record player. But, for some reason, maybe the previous owner had no connection for a separate ground on his amplifier. Um, this was, um, well, this was changed. Um, now, it is like this. Ground, which is um, the chassis ground, and also the negative of the left channel. And, um, you know, left positive, right positive, and right negative. And the ground itself, the original ground, is hooked up to nothing. But still, the shielding of the original cable is hooked up to it. And that means that actually, because the shielding of this is hooked up to nothing, there must be a horrible hum um, so I'll have to work on this, have to put it back into the original, no, original shape. Um, I will not replace this wire with another wire like this, directly hooked up to the record player. I will use these normal separate RCA jacks and also this, um, um, ground connection, this separate thing. I'll put that all right here and then I'll make an additional hole right here where I will put the new power cord through so that there are there is more distance between audio and the power. So I'll work on that right now and then I'll be back. Well now I replace the power cord I made a hole right here, and there is the power cord, goes in right here, and then goes from there, and it's hooked up right here. So that is working again, already tried it out. And these are the new connections. Let's make some light. Here they are. Um, this is the ground connection, and these are, of course, the outputs. They're hooked up right here. Um, originally, there was a big metal plate which um, where both cables were coming out. And, um, well, the ground connection is hooked up using these green wires to this shielding plate, which goes over the um, connections from the cartridge. And it's also connected to the chassis, to the entire chassis. Well, and then, next thing, the connections from the cartridge. As you can see, I, um, I had to move this um, entire thing a little bit in this direction, because the connections were a little bit too short. This connection was much too short, so I put in, well, an extension right here. It's just a little piece here. And, um, well, so that is all hooked up now to two shielded cables. 
these are connected to the RCA jacks and now I'll put this shielding plate back on there and then we can find out how good the connections are done. Okay, now I put the shielding plate back in its place but now first before we test it I'll do another thing the potentiometers and the switch for the motor control are so dirty that sometimes they won't make any contact so if you're turning the potentiometers sometimes the motor um, will just turn off and with the switch the speed selector and on and off switch for the motor it's the same sometimes the motor doesn't get any power anymore so we'll put some of my spray in there. I have it now hooked up to my Kenwood receiver and the Dynatron speakers and unfortunately we have a lot of hum as you can hear. That's really really stupid but the rest of the record player seems to be all right. You can see the stroboscope is working and also the needle and the cartridge seem to be okay. Only thing that's missing now is the belt. Uh, we can do a little bit of trying. I'll put down the arm now. Let's turn this. Sounds pretty good. There you can see stroboscope working. Okay, we want to stop that now. Well, so, well, uh, the record player works so far. But, well, now I really have to uh, find out how to remove that hum. Because it's really, really annoying. You can hear. Well, I found out that also the tone arm and the cartridge were hooked up the wrong way. So, I uh, fixed that. And, well, it's a lot better now. The hum isn't as loud as it used to be. But still, it's pretty loud. So, I think all my nice RCA jacks are causing the hum. And therefore, I'll have to do something that originally I didn't want it to do. I have to hook up a cable directly to the record player. I have here a cable that originally came out of an old Philips record player and I'll hook it up to the record player right now. Now I have the wire hooked up and well success! Even on the maximum volume you can't hear any hum only thing you can hear is the hiss caused by the final preamplifier of the receiver. There is absolutely no hum anymore. And so, well, the Technics record player is working again. Well, now I'll uh, do some final stuff. I'll lubricate the motor, put in a new belt, and finally put the table back on there. And then, of course, the whole unit needs a good cleaning. And I have to find something to remove all the scratches of the cover. Because it looks really, really horrible. Es ist 21 Uhr. Die Nachrichten. Die Bürger der Bundesrepublik können nach den Worten von Bundeskanzler Kohl...